Hi, I'm Mark Smith, and I run Smith Performance in Tiverton, Rhode Island, and we make car-to-truck conversions. One of the most common questions I get, since we make a kit for people to build themselves at home, one of the most common questions I get is how to paint a car yourself. And even though it's a challenging process, these days the chemicals and the products that are out there make it easier than ever to give it a try. I'm going to share with you all of the things I use to paint. This is going to be a Beetle Ute. It's going to be in silver. I have another red one to do in a few weeks. And doing it yourself is, is completely possible. And the key is finding a good paint shop that supplies paint in your area to body shops. In our case in Fall River, it's Finish Master. Shameless plug, they do a terrific job. They stock just about everything. And more importantly, they give you options on less expensive products that work just as well. So whether it's the actual brands that I'm using here or similar ones in your area, these are the things you need to paint your own car. Focus mostly on a Smith Performance fiberglass kit conversion. So to begin with, you're gonna need a couple of tools. And everybody has their favorite tool that they like to use. I'll share with you, everybody has a little five or six inch GA compressor driven sander where you're gonna run 80 grit and 220 grit. Gotta have one of these. They're just so useful, so light. You don't wear your arm out, fabulous tool. My favorite tool is the air board. It's a sanding board. It's a linear sander, uses two inch by 14 inch, you know, uh, strips that are self-adhesive. You buy them anywhere. Once again, 80 grit and 36 grit. These are what they look like when they come in. You buy 50 or so of these at a time. Uh, 80 grit is the finer grit. 36 grit, you really have to be careful because it'll dive into anything. It literally strips things down. So I don't use 36 grit often on the kit cars because the base pieces come out pretty close to the shape you want. And so 80 grit is your weapon of choice. Once again, 80 grit and 220 grit self-adhesive pads, same thing, buy a box of them. You know, you don't just use them on the DA. You use them, I, I love these cheap foam pads that are abrasive at uh, Lowe's. You, you take a new one of these, you take the 80 grit disc, and you put it on the pad and fold the ends up and that's your block to sand. So I don't really have all these special blocks. I do like a flexible hand board that uses the same abrasive paper as the air board, but it's a flexible board, foam backed, and it can follow a curve if you have it. I, once again, on the very curvy VW Beetle kits that we have, a flexible board is kind of handy by hand. Now, you're gonna prep your gel coat with your air board, 80 grit, you're gonna sand the whole thing 80 grit, DA, you're gonna look for high and low spots, but you're not gonna do much else uh, with the high and low spots now other than roughing all the gel coat, okay? And this is the part that has to do with kit cars. You're gonna rough the gel coat, you're gonna repair the gel coat with Bondo, and I didn't get any of that, uh, get into that to begin with, just because ultra light body filler is, everybody pretty, knows, pretty much knows what Bondo is. You're gonna use on a Smith kit car, very little Bondo because that's more for high and low spots and edges, things like that. Uh, really what you're gonna use is the sanding products and the paints that I'm gonna describe. So let's begin. You're gonna be putting your fiberglass panels onto your car, in our case, with Panel Bond. It's a 3M product. Uh, it's a two-part epoxy. They replace welding these days with Panel Bond. You're gonna have a special gun, a twin cylinder gun. You buy it on Amazon. I'll try to put the link on the video when we post it on YouTube. But you're gonna have a twin cylinder, 3M panel bond system. It mixes in the nozzle, comes with a nozzle, mixes in the nozzle. Fabulous, fabulous product. You literally are not riveting or mechanically bonding many panels at all these days. You're using panel bond. There's also, instead of a $50 uh, tube, you know, instead of a $50 tube of panel bond, your second time around, this is smart products. There's off label panel bond that's $20 cheaper, in my experience, works just as well. So keep in, you know, that's where your local finish master is mine, but your local paint shop will really help you. They carry these private label brands, probably still made by 3M, but off label so they can compete. So that's the panel bond bonding agent. You've got your fiberglass all sanded down. You've got your car pieces mounted. Uh, you're gonna start sanding 80 grit, 80 grit, 80 grit, and you've got a pretty rough surface in front of you that's ready to start working on. 
at the very end, when you're done with your Bondo work, 80 grit, you're sanded, you're rough, you're gonna take out your 220 grit discs and you're gonna hand sand. I don't really use any of the mechanical sanders for a 220 grit sand. I'll use the DA on some of the edges with 220, but you're taking a very rough surface, whether it's Bondo, fiberglass, uh, the gel coat that's remaining, you're taking that rough surface with the deep gouges and you're basically smoothing that out so that it's ready for primer. And that's your 220 grit uh, sandpaper. You can prime 80 grit, but you're gonna prime it twice because the first layer is gonna fill the cracks. The second layer is gonna give you a smoother finish, okay? So 80 grit, 220 grit, let's talk about the products you're gonna use. Um, make sure I know what you're doing. Oh, 2K primer. Your first layer uh, of primer these days is called a 2K primer. And I use a gray, you can use whatever color you wish. But the key to these modern products compared to the old days, uh, you know, when I was a kid, it was lacquer primer that you sprayed on, it dried, it physically dried in the air, it turned solid, you sanded that later on in the day, and it continued shrinking for quite a while. It wasn't like Bondo, which is a two-part reaction, right? You have the Bondo paste, and then you have the activator, the hardener, that mixes together and makes a chemical reaction that firms and hardens the Bondo into something solid you can sand, right? Same philosophy, these urethane primers, you tell the, no, we'll just, going. yeah, I'll cut it while I put it to YouTube. Okay, okay. go ahead. You just kill that and then I'll go back to it. No, I'll keep rolling. I'll keep rolling. And then I'll cut <laughs> okay. it. Okay. So, 2K primers are activated primers. So when you mix the hardener, I think it's a 3 to 1 ratio on this particular case. When you mix the hardener with the base primer, it's not just drying. It's chemically activated to harden. And that's the key because it shrinks less when it dries it slash hardens. So you're going to put a pretty heavy coat of 2K primer on that fiberglass panel. It's going to dry amazingly fast. Inside of a couple hours, you can start to sand. I wait till the next day just because it turns really hard. It sands so easily. You, depending on how smooth the surface is, I will lightly go over the surface with 80 grit, even though it's 2K primer and we went over uh, a 220 finish. If I see any highs and lows, I'll go back to the 80 grit in that little area. But in general, a hand pad, a bigger pad, with your 220 grit roll of sandpaper on your pad. And when you start sanding the 2K primer, you're gonna, you're gonna see what I mean. Especially if you're a beginner and you're doing a test piece, fantastic. Pick a, you know, pick a rear surround, pick a fender, and just do a part of it. Do your Bondo work, practice that. When you put this 2K primer on and start sanding it, it's gonna melt away. Change your sandpaper often. You know, it starts clogging up, get rid of it. That's why you buy the whole roll at Home Depot, or at Home Depot, at uh, Harbor Freight, or, or at your paint store. Uh, that step is the key to the whole thing. You're gonna spray that thing two or three times. You're gonna sand, prime, sand, prime, and if there's little pinholes and everything, there's, there's a product called Spot Putty. I don't have any because we don't have many pinholes, but uh, a Spot Putty is kind of like a primer that you can fill a little hole with. You don't want to repair a large area, you just want to fill a hole with it. It's called Spot Prime or Spot Primer. But in general, the 2K Primer is gonna do that job these days. And you're gonna have a nice, sanded, smooth finish, 220 grit, ready to begin the next process, which is put some color on this panel. So I'll, I will uh, give you a couple of choices here. 220 grit, to me, when I'm doing a shop truck, I don't go the next step to 320 grit, which is even finer, for paint. I leave it at 220. And that's because the coatings that we're putting on are so thick, you don't really see those scratches, those micro scratches in the base coat. If you're doing a show car and you really, really, really want a nice job, go ahead and sand your 2K primer with a 320 grit sandpaper to get rid of the last of those rougher scratches. The reason I say that is that for me, a slightly rougher finish guarantees that the base coat and the clear coat are gonna stick. Mostly the base coat, and that's what we're gonna talk about next. So a 2K primer, you load it up, it, it can go on thick. It cures, you sand, whatever you see in front of you sanded is the finish you're gonna get. So take your time at this step, at the 2K primer step. Next up, are your base coat products. Uh, this particular car I'm doing is a silver, a reflex silver. Metallic silvers are notoriously difficult to match, and so I'm gonna blend most of the side of the car. You know, and a blend is I'll 
fully paint the rear quarter panel silver, and then I'll go over the whole thing and, and, and go into the door and kind of fog it into the door before I apply the clear. Base coats are a little bit tricky. They go on very dull. So I've got the base coat paint itself. Here, this is the silver. There's a very small amount of uh, activator that you use. Some people say you don't need the activator. I follow, if Nason is making an activator for this paint, I follow Nason's instructions. It says so right on the side of the jar here. I'll tell you the proportions. You'll need a mixing cup, which I forgot to throw in here, but a little mixing cup so you can get the right proportions for the paint that you have. So you'll mix up your base coat. You'll uh, uh, add your full base, which is, uh, in this case, Nason's. Uh, it, this is the same as a thinner to thin out the paint a little bit. You don't add much. Uh, the ratios here for each brand are different. Once again, on your side of your paint can, follow the little graphic that tells you how much of each component to make. I make a quart at a time. Uh, mix it well. You know, I'm, I'm not talking about a, you, you can shake it if you want, but I mean, you're talking paint stick for five minutes or a, a drill a mixer for a few minutes to make really sure that all the metallic is off of the bottom of the container uh, and that you're getting the same color that the original manufacturer intended. So that's your base coat. Base coat, activator, a little bit of a, a reducer depending on the temperature that you're shooting, hot temperatures, you're gonna have a hot reducer, medium. This one's medium because we're in New England at 70 degrees, 65 degrees. So that base coat, you're going to apply in several coats. You don't want to lay all your base coat on at once. You want to fog the first one on, wait 15 minutes for it, for it to dry a little bit. You're going to fog a heavier coat on the next coat. You're going to wait another 15 minutes or so. And then you're going to put a third coat of color, and that coat is the one you're probably going to blend into the door if you're doing half a car. Uh, if you're doing the whole car, just make sure you paint with the same method each time. And you're going to practice with the last stage that I'll uh, tell you when we're spraying clear and I'll talk about the spray guns. So that's the base coat. Uh, when you're using a base coat, uh, you know, primer versus base coat versus clear, I do have two different spray guns that I buy at Harbor Freight. You can tell this is my workhorse. It's a 10, on sale it's 10 bucks at Harbor Freight. I, I still can't believe the prices. These, I mean, they're probably Chinese, uh, but they're absolutely throwaway spray guns. I mean, think about it, the bottle or the can of solvent, the lacquer thinner is about 16 or 20 bucks. Half a gallon of solvent is the same price as your gun. So why are you hanging on to old guns? I do start, I'll have a primer gun like this. The $30 gun is super special. I mean, think about it, a $30 spray gun back in the day, uh, you know, unheard of, right? So I, I usually start a job with a brand new color and clear gun and then after a few paint jobs, or they get beat up, when they start looking like this, they turn into a primer gun. And I'll shoot, remember the, the 2K primer, as great as this product is, you can only shoot about 10 cars worth of primer jobs, even though you rinse with the lacquer thinner. You can only shoot about 10 different loads, if you will, projects, before the very thing that makes these primers so good bites you in the rear. Remember, if this stuff is curing chemically, even if there's a little bit left behind, it's not going to rinse out with thinner. And so it builds up a little and you throw the gun away. So in general, I always say after a couple of cars or let's call it 10 panels, you know, like, you know, a set of five panels per car, two cars worth of priming, I toss it and then I move my high dollar spray gun down to the primer gun. Oftentimes, if I'm careful with, this, with the high dollar one, I can clean it and make that last for a long time because I'm only shooting color and clear, right? The primer tends to stick in the gun and you throw that gun away. So a cheap gun, 10 or 20 bucks, Harbor Freight. A more expensive one for the color and the clear, it's more mental. I've shot base coat, clear coats with this one. See all the color on it? Not a whole lot of difference, but mentally I feel that I'm using a better gun if I buy the better one. It's, it's all mental. Uh, so, primer, base coat, several layers of base coat. Play around with it. You have to cover. If you have gray primer and you're shooting a silver, you got to be careful because you can't really see where the primer is sometimes, right? But you do want to match your base coat or your, your primer with your base coat color kind of close. So if you're shooting a black car, uh, you're, you know, rather than using up all the expensive paint in black to cover, use a darker primer, right? If you're forced to use one color primer, so be it. That's what I do and then I just use a little more color for that base coat. So, primer, sand, you're ready to go. Base coat and thinners, you can buy this stuff. Primer.
practice spraying it. You don't want to ever have it on really wet where it could possibly drip at all. You're fogging this stuff on, waiting, fogging it on two or three, four coats of the base coat color. It goes on very dull. And you can tell it's not something that's ever going to drip if you do it right. Light, light coats, many light coats, no heavy coats. The last one I might put a little bit if I'm going consistently all around the car. I'll be a little heavier on that last one, but it should be three or four even coats. The next step after the color, this stuff is going to take a day to really set up. This activator is a little longer term. So you've got a window of time after you spray your base coat. You've got a window of time where the clear coat will react with the base coat and make a very good bond. If you wait more than 24 hours, and this is a rough number, depending on temperature and the sun and all those kind of issues, if you wait more than 24 hours, you will probably have the potential for adhesion problems to the clear. The clear might not stick. You've seen cars where the clear is kind of flaking off. The color is still there, but the clear top coat is kind of coming off. That's usually this catalyst curing the base coat and not enough chemical uh, stickiness, if you will, when the clear coat, which is also catalyzed, when the clear coat goes over it, it has to have something chemically to bite onto. And that's why inside of, I mean, I would say an hour, three hours after spraying your base coat, you want to spray your clear. You don't want to go so early that the, that the clear kind of dissolves the base coat and, you know, and, and kind of puts a splotch on it. You know, if, if 10 minutes later you're spraying, there's an odd that you could mess up the base coat. But an hour or three window, I think, is just perfect. You've got this dull finish of your base coat and we're moving to the clear. So mix it up, three to one. You're mixing this up. Uh, you're not putting any reducer in it unless you really are talented or it's very hot. Uh, the reducer thins it out and, and it drips easier. And so clear coat, you know, new gun, get yourself all squared away. You know, you're wearing your good mask with the, char with the carbon filter, right? This is a dust mask. It's just for dust. You see how thin that is? It's not a carbon filter. Just for dust and Bondo. When you're sanding, you use this one. When you're painting, a good carbon uh, filter. So clear coat. This is the stage where the do-it-yourselfers at home have the most trouble because we don't have a spray booth at home. I even shoot stuff in the shop here, and you're going to get dust in the final finish. If you see the professionals in a paint booth, they're going to spray a perfect layer of clear coat. There's not a shred of dust. There's, not a, there's no bugs. When you shoot this clear, you're going to get bugs, you're going to get sand, and it's okay. It's okay. If you're really lucky, you'll get a beautiful, shiny surface without a bug in it, right? But fear not. You're going to spray this in several coatings, at least three or four coats of clear. This stuff sets up an hour and a half, hour, whatever. You put your good mask on. Make sure, you know, it, the simple things. If you're in a white suit, you're probably okay. Have a dust blower, you know. Make sure you have a hairnet or, or you wash your hands. You know, that last stage, you're going to wipe off the uh, base coat if it got dusty while sitting there. And with a, with a tack rag or a very, very clean paper, you know those blue paper towels they have at Home Depot? Those are dust-free uh, towels. You don't want to use a white, um, like a washcloth size piece because it'll transfer white cotton pieces onto the finish, right? So when you're wiping down your base coat, always use a, a paper towel, and, and, uh, but the really fine paper towels that don't leave lint, right? Once that's blown off and clear, you're going to do your clear coat. You're going to spray a pretty light, I would say light, meaning light enough where you see a little bit of shiny when you spray. You don't want to see a sand finish, you know, like the droplets. If you go real fast with the clear, you'll see a fog and it looks like little droplets are on it. You want a little more than that. You want to, you want to move along with your air pressure and your gun that you're going to play with, 40 PSI. And you're going to play with the mixture of stuff. And when you spray it against a piece, you know, you're going to take your gun. When you spray it against a cardboard piece, you're going to want to see a nice ellipse, you know, pattern. You're not going to want to see a round dot. You want it to be, you know, from, from this far away, you want to see about this much of a pattern that's kind of an oval. And, and you'll figure that out very quickly. On your test panel, you're going to spray just enough to make it shiny. Not a lot. You're going to go over the whole car. Remember, vertical surfaces are going to want to drip. You don't want to be heavy on the clear. 
just enough to see a shiny finish and then stop. If you keep going like every rookie in the world, it's going to drip. And these products are amazingly easy to spray. They don't drip easily. So if you're dripping with your clear, you loaded it on there and there's no need for it. Put a nice light coat all around the edges, do everything light. And at the end of each step, right? I didn't mention this, but this is lacquer thinner. Every time you, you use one of the primers or the colors or the clear, you know, uh, rinse out your gun if you're not gonna be uh, using the gun for another few hours because the stuff will kick inside the gun. So that's what this is here for. But the clear coat, first layer, just enough to be clear. Give yourself a solid half hour, 45 minutes, even an hour to let that kind of tack up so that the next coat going on it doesn't join with it and sag. Do another layer of clear. This one can be a little heavier, but once again, only enough where you barely see it shiny. You're not trying to get a glass finish. Every now and then on the last coat, I'll go heavy because I'm painting something like a tabletop surface like this. Like if I have a, if I have a, a tailgate, and the tailgate is flat on a table, I can put quite a bit on there without it dripping because it's flat. But don't overdo it. There's no reason to overdo the clear in one setting. Do at least three or four coats of clear, lighter coats at the beginning, let it tack up, let it, you know, an hour drying, half an hour drying, you'll tell. Go to the paper next to the clear and touch it. And when it stops being wet on your finger and it's tacky, you can shoot another layer. So shoot four layers of clear, we'll say. Enough layers of clear where if you sanded it, it would take a lot of effort to get through to the color. Does that make sense? Because that is actually what you're going to do at the end. You're going to sand this down and buff the clear. If it's a shop truck, I'm doing my best job to do clear without any dust in it or bugs. And then I'll sand out a bug or a piece of dust or whatever and buff that spot. I try not to buff the whole car because I'm, you know, shop trucks are just so much easier than cars that have to be show cars, right? But it's the same process up to this point. You lay on the clear, put it on you know, nice and heavy in four coats, four light coats. That last coat, if it's a horizontal surface like this, go ahead if you want to try to get a nice finish. It's more for your head and it's fun, right? Uh, and enjoy the process because with this step here, you almost can't make a mistake. If you do have a drip, let it kick, let it go solid, and then gently sand out the drip Go, you know, not 80 grit, you know, but a 220 grit sandpaper with a hard block. Sand out the highs of the drip. Sand it out 220, 400, 600, and then buff it a little and you'll see it disappear. Because clear is like sanding a piece of clear plastic. It can be dripped on the top. Underneath, it's all smooth after you sand, and then you can buff. We'll go through that at the end. We'll show you that at the very, very end of these videos, um, how to do that. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I wanted to show you the pieces that I buy to paint a car, and this is really it. And, you know, you can, you can do this. The, the steps you want to practice on, you don't have to worry about spraying primer. It goes on. If it's too thick, you're sanding it down. Work your talents on sanding. Trying to find high and low spots with your hand. That's the skill that most people don't have. You're going to prime, you're going to sand, and you can see on the primer when you're sanding it, a low spot is a, is a spot that's not being sanded. You can see it. The high spot is the piece, is the, is the part where it's being sanded. And you want to sand your panel so that when you go over it with your sanding block, with your 220 grit paper, that all the scratches look the same. And that's why 80 grit to 220 grit is so cool. Because wherever the 80 grit didn't get sanded, you'll see a rough finish. And there's no substitute for that step. You're just going to have to learn how to do it. I'll show you in another video how I do it a few tricks with spraying, uh, you know, like a black guide coat over the primer when you think you're done. You know, so you'll sand it where you think you're done. You put a ghost misting coat of black over the gray. And then when you sand, you'll find yourself not able to sand some of the black because it's in a trough. Or you'll sand what looks like a spot because you're sanding the top off it. That's a bump, right? So there's some tricks on that. We'll get into that later. But these are the items you need to paint a Smith Beetle Ute, Charger Ute, uh, uh, whatever you're building from my kits, but in general, any car job is going to use these products to finish a paint job at home. That's it. Uh, next one will be on priming and sanding. Um, after that, we'll do a spray tutorial. You don't really need much to, uh, to spray primer. It just has to get on the surface, you know. Um, 
a little bit of talk when we're talking about the primer. I'll talk about very heavy polyester primers. If your panel is horrible and you have to really fill low spots and you don't want to do Bondo over the whole thing, there's another product called Slick Sand that you can use. But we'll go into that in the next video, which will be priming and sanding. But for now, this is what you need. Oh, and uh, nitrile gloves. Watch for sale at uh, Harbor Freight because everything you touch, especially with the adhesive, with the black panel bond, um, it gets everywhere. Every time you turn around, there's going to be stuff or black or paint on you. Wear gloves the whole process uh, and, and you'll be much better off. Um, I think that is it. I, if I think of something for the next video, I'll add it in. But for now, this is the stuff. Yeah. Oh, by the way, here you go. Uh, we can't really zoom in here, but the total for all this stuff here, not the tools, but all the paint supplies you see here was $543.74. So I got enough, I have a gallon here that can do two um, half beetles or one full car. You'll end up with a lot left over. Remember the base coat covers very, very, very well. So that 543 will give me both of these beetles with the exception of the new red color, which I already had from another red car that I painted. So, I mean, when you're talking value for the money and the fun of learning, you really can't beat it. If you buy just the primer at first and the whole thing's a disaster, all you have is a, is a, is a gun, I mean, 10 or 20 bucks for this, one uh, setup of the 2K primer and the sandpaper, and you'll know if you can paint a car. You don't need to buy the $200 worth of paint. If you can't do this step, the priming step, and the sanding step, which we're going to talk about in the next video, you're probably going to have to give it a little more of a, uh, a little more practice before you step on to the color. But if you can do the sanding step and the priming step, you can probably move on very, very easily to the color code. That's all for now. Mark Smith signing off from Tiverton, Rhode Island, and Smith Performance with our Smith Utes. We'll talk to you next time.